Hi, welcome back to Soul Food Ministries and Outreach. I'm Henriette Hobson. Thank you for tuning in. Well, today, and welcome to No More Jim Crow Ministry. Don't want to forget that. We're, we're all one big, big ministry, uh, ministering to everything that Jesus leads me to minister on, <laughs> okay? And so there, there we go. And so we want to thank you, Lord. We want to thank you for being so good and so awesome. We want to thank the Lord and bless him, praise him, worship him, because he is worthy to be praised. Lord, we're just thanking you and praising you and asking you to open our understanding, shine the light of your, your, uh, your light <clears throat> on the eyes of our hearts so that we may see you and understand you and know you. Thank you, Lord, that we may get revelation knowledge of you and who we are as you. Thank you. Bless those that are not as fortunate. Bless those that are suffering, grieving, homeless, addictions, trafficked, harmed and hurt and assaulted in any way, mistreated in any way, rebuking prejudice and all ill treatment and we just give you the praise and the glory. And we bind the enemy and we bind up all those spirits that operate in the greed and the uh, uh, hatred and the murder and the genocides and the colonization. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, it could have went on and on and on and on and on, but I want to get to what it was that I, got, I came on here for. And we... You know, it is important that we bind up those spirits that come to do harm. And um, we must stand because evil can, will continue to ravish the world if we don't. So anyway, anyway, um, I wanted to, I, I made a video, but I had to cut it off real fast. I was sitting in the car, and so I it just it wasn't I didn't I didn't want to put it up. So, uh, but this, what this is about is I saw a documentary, and um, you know PBS does some beautiful work. I I just love PBS and their content and how they you know they they speak on everything, whether it's controversial or not, and they give us different views and ways to see it, and the way others are seeing it. And you get a chance to form your own opinions and get informed and enlightened. But we must, as Christians, base our information as we embrace it through the Word of God. Okay? And so uh, it's good to get facts. We must, you know, have the facts. It's great to have the facts. But we must also base everything on and line it up with this with this holy bible scriptures too now i know i say it every time and i'm gonna continue to say it. yes man did translate it and yes there was some flaws in the words that were used to translate certain things and the way that it was phrased maybe even but it does not take away the real true meaning and the holiness of what christ and you know father and holy spirit intended when this was put into the heart of man to actually put on paper so I'm not going to go away from the Bible. I stopped reading it for a while after I learned about grace, real true grace, because I had been so, uh, it wasn't that I let the script, I had the scriptures inside of me and I let the Holy Spirit uh, reprogram those scriptures in me. Uh, reading them, I had so many years of uh, being ingrained in when I read it, I read it that way and didn't see what the truth of what God was really saying in them. It was so just bombarded and overwhelmed with the deception of uh, the law thrown in on grace that I needed to back off for a few minutes, you know, for a few minutes, which was more like, you know, I don't know how long the time was, but everyone can't do that because a lot of people, they fall when they do that. They, they lose heart. I mean, every individual has to 
work out their own soul salvation and what they can handle and what they can't handle. Anyway, that was that was what I had to do. And when I read it now, the fire of God, you know, and his love and his, you know, it's so new and it is so under that grace and not the law. It, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. And the Holy Spirit is the one that opens up that word and makes revelation of it to you. Uh, what I was wanting to speak on was the book of David, not the book of David, but the life of David. The King David, the David and Goliath David, uh, the shepherd boy David. You know, th th this documentary was speaking about how sex is uh, uh, explained and presented in the Bible. And you know, you get you get mankind and start putting his own, you know, in there, and it's gonna always turn into something that it is not that the Bible is not. You know, they add their own filthy lust in with it instead of seeing what God really intended. A lot of times, there are people that are explaining um, the scriptures are not even a born again Christian. So you have to really know that you know the scriptures. You know, be close to your God. You know, have have the heart and the mind of Christ and weigh everything based on that. Asking, you know, the Holy Spirit that lives within you, the knower inside of you to reveal to you. And this has been going on for, you know, oh God, I don't know, probably thousands of years where they have twisted the whole relationship between King, uh, David and Jonathan, King Saul's son. And wanted to make that a homosexual relationship, and they and they literally, someone literally called David bisexual. I can, I was just like, what? <laughs> and so, uh, to my at best, he was bisexual, something like that. I, it, you know what? Because people don't understand real, true friendship. I mean, there's nothing pure inside of most people. You know, they don't, they don't see anything clean and pure and just, you know, everything has to be sexualized and dirtied up with sexual in the windows instead of just a pure love, a, 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 a fondness of another person, you know, and a connection with them. Every chemistry is not sexual. Please, <laughs> you know, um, because marketing has used sex to market everything, okay? It has penetrated the minds of society and that's all they know. And they, it just gets more perverted as time goes on, <laughs> you know? If they're into this, then they turn it into that. You know, if they're into uh, homosexuality, everything's got to, you know, have that flavor in it. If it's um, dominatrix or whatever, you know, whatever, porno or whatever, it's all, you know, and it's a sad thing. It's a sad thing. And so many people are misled because of it. David and Jonathan had a pure just plain old brother love that that even uh had a god it was see it was god was involved in that relationship that friendship that love that they had when man decided to describe it in the bible when he did that it opened up a whole you know, can of worms where people would just just went haywire and crazy and started saying, oh, they were homosexual because he said that they had a love that was greater than the love of a man and a woman. You can't say stuff just off the cuff like that and think somebody's going to understand it as not in, not in, not in this society it, or, in, or any society. You know, um, everything, like I said, has been perverted. And 
there was such thing, you know, there was a brotherhood and that is not just for men, you know, but a friendship. And I call it a brotherhood because it's, you know, a relationship uh, connection that were between two people that just were so fond of each other because they, they just this chemistry they had with, with one another and they enjoyed the same things. We, you know, the, we, we're talking man, man, woman, woman, man, woman. Uh, it is even between, <laughs> unfortunately, that's gone crazy too. A person and their pet, you know, a dog or horse or something, you know, that relates to them, that responds to them. When someone, when something responds to you, you know, you become fond of it. But there's a balance that's got to be in everything. You know, you can, whew, the sickness, <laughs> really, that people just like, ooh. And so they, they took this thing and they made David and Jonathan homosexual partners. And they were just comrades and, you know, on the battlefield. I mean, he admired, David admired Jonathan and Jonathan admired David. Jonathan was a king's son. And he loved God as well as he loved. He was, you know, he was so dedicated to his, this man just had a dedicated passion. And he was so dedicated to his, you know, the, 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 the bond of friendship and loyalty was so strong in him that it led, he ended up being led astray because he followed his father unto death. This, this, this was the, this was the kind of loyalty that this man had and that they had at that time. And, um, David was the same way, you know, he loved God so much that he was willing to do whatever God called him to do. You know, he, you know, stuck his life out there for the sheep, you know, his father's sheep and do his job, you know, to the, to the, to, to the death if necessary. He fought off a lion and a bear, you know, with a slingshot, you know, <laughs> dedicated and loyal to what it was they were called to do. So these two young men had the same loyal passion in them. And Jonathan knew that David was the anointed, anointed king. It's on you when he anoints you. And he was just favored among people because Jonathan, I mean, David had been out in those fields with a heart and God and them sheep. <laughs> and that's all he did was worship God while he was out there. And so when he came out of those fields, that anointing was all in him and on him. And but they went through, of course, the the uh, practice that they in the ritual of anointing with the natural oil, you know, and being selected and, you know, what have you. Uh, anointed by the prophet and, and so forth. But. People twist everything up. You have no insight in the spirit. You will just do and say anything. So I have a point on that is because, first of all, I, I just kind of briefly go through David's life because David was a man of loving women. <laughs> you know, <laughs> he got the king's daughter. He won her, for, you know, for killing Goliath. And she betrayed him, you know, Saul and, you know, he, you know, it was a mess there and it's a long story to go into all that, but he also had other wives and, uh, ended up, you know, with concubines. I mean, before he even married the King's daughter, there were women flocking, you know, what they, we call them, they groupies. They were the whole entire town. They would sing in songs. Saul has killed his thousands, but David, his tens of thousands. Yeah, David, you know, and David was handsome and what have you. And these women, I mean, they were just, it was free for all for David, <laughs> you know, and 
Then he got the, the king's daughter as, as, as a prize. I'm telling you, David, wherever David went, he was collecting women. He was collecting wives like baseball cards. I mean, he was like every city he went to, he had a wife and some, he had made some kids. You know, he was not short of his desire for women. And so by the time he, you know, when he was on the run from Saul, um, you know, Jonathan was, God put David and Jonathan together. And, and God used Jonathan to protect David. And Jonathan vowed himself to David that he would protect him and be there, his comrade. I'm right here, your, your right arm here. You know, anybody's going to fight you, they're going to fight me. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take somebody out for you. You know, he was God in the flesh in a way for David, you know. And he, he told him, he said, my own father, if he threatens you, and I know that he's coming after you. I'm going to let you know so you can, I'm going to get you out of here and get you to safety. And he did just that. Listen, y'all don't know anything about loyalty because everybody cheats on everybody. There's nothing loyal about anybody hardly anymore. I mean, there's a few people out here. There's a remnant. God's got a remnant. But we've been taught not to be loyal in this society. And... um, so when David finally did become king, I mean, he had wives, 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 <laughs> you know, wives everywhere, a trail of wives that were in, <coughs> excuse me, exile that was just there. And they, they were, you know, his wife somewhere with some kids somewhere, but, you know, he couldn't marry anybody else or whatever. I don't know what they did them doing, but he had a trail of wives all over the Middle East. And wherever else it was, he where he went. And so when he became king, he had a kingdom full of women for him. <laughs> All shapes, sizes, shades, and colors. You know, and when this one woman caught his eye, he's somewhere he, you know, just it's too long to go into all the details of what we believe that got him in that mess. It was a lust thing. And then he eventually, he lost sight of God. I mean, you can get so big, you know, you lose sight of God. And David lost sight of God, you know, but he, even though God was in his heart, you know, he never left God, but he got so into himself that, you know, things got cloudy. And so he ended up using this woman, you know, having sex with her, who refuses the king, okay? And her husband's off in war. She's, you know, without a man. He's, you know, up on this rooftop, you know, doing the, he, he probably was doing a little grieving as well as he was because he was not a, he was used to being in battle and he wasn't in battle in, in, at this time. He, uh, I don't know if he was just too old to go, you know, felt like he was, you know, too tired to go or too, you know, let them go and do it or whatever. He was taking a break, whatever the situation. Uh, he's at his kingdom, which is standing higher than every other building. And he's looking out and he sees this woman bathing and voila, <laughs> you know. So he ends up getting this woman pregnant. Her husband's off at war and he can't explain without her getting hurt and a big mess of everything and him looking bad, explain her having his baby and this woman committing adultery with him. And so he's trying to protect her because him, he's king. He can walk away. It's over. You know, he can do, what is anybody going to do about it? But for her, so he brings his, her husband home from battle, tells him, you know, you've done so well out there. You know, I want you to just, you know, come home for a break and a rest and enjoy your wife and enjoy, you know, going to sleep with your wife and, you know, eat well. He fed him and gave him fine drink and all that. And the guy refused because he was a loyal comrade. And he said, if my fellow soldiers are out there in the trenches and they are, you know, without food, without 
you know, they're women. I'm not going to sleep with mine. That would be wrong. And so he wouldn't sleep with his wife. And David wooed him and wooed him and tried and tried to get him, got him drunk, did everything that he could to get him. Umar's really commanding him to go sleep with his wife, but the man refused. And so David, you know, he's, he's foggy at this point with God. And so he's, because he's all about self at this point, flesh, flesh, flesh. And so he sends this man out to be killed because he's going to cover up the fact that this is his baby and he's protecting this woman, but he's also protecting himself. And so what he did was he wanted her anyway. And so he wouldn't, he sent him out to the front lines to be murdered. And so, you know, God frowned upon that very, very highly. And so he said, um, you know, he sent the prophet, they used prophets at the time to get the message over to God, from God to the man of God. And so he told the king, because the king was not going to listen to anybody but the prophet. And, but he was so fogged up and veiled off that he couldn't see his wrong. And he said, the prophet came to him and he said, David, well, I have a, a story I want to bring to you, a situation I want to bring to you, and I want your opinion on it. And he's, you know, he's listening to the prophet, and the prophet says, what, would you, what do you think should happen to a man that has everything? He's wealthy. He's got many, many, many sheep and much land. And he takes from a, a man that doesn't have enough, anything but this one lamb. And he wanted that lamb and he took it as his own and took it from the man and killed the man to get his land and his, and his lamb. And so David, of course, you know, his, his righteous indignation came up, you know, with, you know, this self-righteousness Oh, he should be killed. You know, he should be da 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 da. You know, and he said, David, that's you. You're that man. You're king. You have everything. You have multiple wives. You have everything. All of Israel. Everything belongs to you. And you took Uriah's wife. You have many wives. And you kill Uriah. David fell on his face before God. He saw himself. He cried out to God, please. Well, the story goes on and the baby dies, but then he marries Bathsheba and then um, they have another child and the child lives and you know, but my, my answer to all of that, to get to this, the answer of, as God so hated the act against his creation of homosexuality, it clearly states Old Testament and New about not sleeping with the same sex. I'm not bashing any homosexuals out there. I'm just telling you what the scriptures say, and I'm not backing down of Jesus for anyone. Now, you can either like this or don't like it. This is what the Bible says. You're never going to change that. The scriptures are the scriptures. It's, it's the life of God. You can't change it no matter what you do. I'm telling this story. I'm not trying to be cruel to anyone. I'm not a homophobic or any of that. But I'm defending David on this and defending the, the Bible, the fact that people are lying about the Bible. If he stated so many times in the scriptures about not sleeping with the same sex and animals and blah, 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 blah. Why do you think that he would not have called him out on that if he was sleeping with other men? And that if he was sleeping with Jonathan, had been sleeping with Jonathan, 
David had killed many men in war and in battle. He had slept with many, many, many uh, women. Why do you think that God would not have called him out and made it plain just like he did with David and this man? Why? Surely he would have called him out on that. That's your answer. Duh. So don't let anybody tell you that Jonathan and David were homosexual partners. People may want to use that to make themselves feel better about whatever it is that they're doing. We, people, we, do, we, we as people do that all the time. It finds examples to use for, to better our cause, regardless of if it's valid or not. Uh, you know, people will lie or whatever it takes to feel better about whatever it is that they are dealing with, they're doing, that is uh, affecting them, they're caught up in, they're bombarded with. Uh, you, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to agree with any mess that is talking God down and making God look bad. I can't do it myself, and I'm surely not going to let. That's a, that's, I'm, I'm called to speak his word. And so there it is. Now, you know, I put the love of God and the salve of the Lord, and I invite anyone that has been offended or hurt by what I just said or what God just said, because this is this is scripture. It didn't have anything to do with me. I didn't write it. <laughs> I didn't I I, I wasn't a, a, a God, you know, at the time, you know, I wasn't in him at the time. Didn't exist, nothing. <laughs> so, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, and God is always right. Period. I stand on that forever. But I send His salve to heal you, His love, because He does love everyone. No matter what you're doing, He loves you. And He wants to see you whole. So. Know that I love you. Know that he loves you. More, more importantly, that he loves you. He loves you too. He gave his life for you. Created a whole new system for you. Greater than that. <sighs> Shed his blood for you. Suffered for you. And he resurrected. So, there you are about David. Leave David alone. <laughs> Leave David alone. We're lying on David and slandering him and Jonathan. So, I hope this helped and opened up some understanding for some people that have, were, you know, questionable about some stuff because they heard this or that from scholars and what have you. So, see you next time.